comment on uh, Schrodinger's equation has to do with the way that Schrodinger's equation is derived from a thing called a Hamiltonian. Hamiltonians have a, uh, a sigma character. The sigma character is a meaning of summation. Now, in a physical system, summation has a variety of different geometric meanings. In a um, one-dimensional kind of sense, if like there were just a number line, then summation would merely be the um, one or two-directional accumulation of values. Yet at a two-dimensional system, the order at which values are accumulated to make the whole can be thought of as starting from the center and then expanding outwards, uh, starting at one uh, area and then doing something similar to a raster scan, or alternately, uh, defining something like a fractal identity, which would cover part of an area, and then adding to it another fractal identity, which would cover more of the area, and then another fractal identity, which would cover more of the area. Um, and of course, there's things like Fourier as well as wavelet transforms for things that are between one and two dimensions. Then with three dimensions, there are even a wider variety of possible geometric fundamental bases for the accumulation of a value, a summation, which would be represented with a sigma. Now, if you, uh, I believe it, you could say disaggregate uh, these different geometric forms of accumulation of value, then the sigma symbol that's present at a Hamiltonian equation that supports Schrodinger's equation takes on different meanings. When it takes on different meanings, that affects the interpretation of Schrodinger's equation, suggesting that Schrodinger's equation has different forms or shapes of validity at different mathematical dimensionalities, which suggest different validity at different physical dimensionalities. Light, being ultimately linear, would have a different sigma formulation than a magnetic field, which has a two- or three-dimensional uh, form statement which a sigma would be applied to. Now, let's look at the idea of grouping things together to create a identity that has a certain flavor or general characteristic. Uh, a very simple approach to that would be uh, two odds would make an even, two evens would make an even, yet an even as well as an odd would make an odd. Thus, we see the possibility that a one-dimensional Hamiltonian, because of the sigma summation of its parts, combined with a two-dimensional Hamiltonian, might have a certain characteristic of deterministic predictive validity that was different than two one-dimensional forms like uh, light with gravity, which would have a different kind of uh, deterministic accumulation with a sigma as it applies to Schrodinger's equation. And the reason I use deterministic is because the reason physicists have previously liked Schrodinger's equation is because it can be used to derive the entire known deterministic universe of the 20th century. Uh, every atom, electron, radioactive decay, as well as photon event can be described from Schrodinger's equation. Yet, it's completely deterministic. It demands deterministicity of the entire knowable universe, which causes uh, Hugh Everett's many worlds interpretation of physics, which is that uh, something similar to 10 to the 42nd parallel universes are created every moment, because rather than some winnowing function, uh, 
there's just the mathematical necessity of creating a whole lot of things at the same time all the time. I'm suggesting that because the sigma function has different determinicity at different uh, dimensionality of observable phenomena, that you get regions of different determinicity, and that this causes a change in the number of parallel universes required uh, with certain actual physical occurrences at the observable universe. Further, that if you would like to create a specific number of parallel universes, or perhaps create zero parallel universes, this may be associated with questioning or finding new values for each of the elements as well as operators of Schrodinger's equation.